Reflections, Reverend Victor Rice, Alora. 
Robinson and Ed Payton. Acknowledging Tracy Williams, Resolutions from Age Parker High School, Daryl Hudson, Senior Principal. The UAB representative will come and represent at another time. We have a resolution also from the city of Birmingham and from Mayor Wilkins. Alabama State Representative, Mr. Van, will come to the legislature. Song Choir, Julie to yours truly. All the laity that will be on the program for the day, please use that backdrop. Do we have any other ministers? If you're a minister of the gospel, do you stand? You're a minister of the gospel. I don't care whether you're licensed or anything, whatever. Won't you stand? Hallelujah. You are to give God praise. All these ministers.
the lady. Dear Heavenly Father, as you have had us to gather here on this day, at this appointed time, Father, we want to say we, we're grateful, even though it's an occasion that we really don't want to be here. But I tell you what, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this life. We come to celebrate a war. Father, I want you to know I am personally thank you. Father, thank you for the ones that have traveled here thus far over the byways and the highways and the airways. Father, give them traveling grace back home. But Father, thank you for this gathering. Father, we want to thank you for the one that went to Galgotha. Father, we want to thank you for his rise. <coughs> We serve a living Savior, y'all. Yes. Don't be acting all dead up in here. We come here to celebrate today. Yes. Father, we want to thank you again. Thank you for watching over us all. Yes. And we love you. And all these things we ask in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Someone in this house shall glory. That was for me. Someone in this house shall glory. If God has done anything for you, you should be scared to open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. was not a dead soul. You should say thank you, Lord, for allowing you to know him for the sickness that you were in. God had to keep in mind I have another church in this place. A scripture reading is coming from the book of Psalms and Philippians. Psalms 19 reads in verse 12 says, who can understand his errors? Clean thy me from the secret fault. Keep back thy servant also from presumption of sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. New Testament scripture, Philippians 1 reads, second verse. Let's be a thing from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I thank each and every prayer of mine for you. All make it request. In the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of his very thing, that he will have begin a good work in you will, perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it had meant for me to think this of it all, 
because I have you in my heart. In as much as both in my bonds and in the difference of confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. So I want to say thank you in this house for the reading of the word. I don't want to, Pastor, I don't want to go off script, but this is a homegoing service. And it's called for a celebration. It could have been a whole different way. And if you came this far, you didn't just come this far just to read the program. You need to celebrate, rejoice, because God allowed you to be a man. Did not I go to the front for you? So I try to thank you.
You know, the beauty of loving him, Lord, I thank you for him. I hope some of these, these youth behind me can have a friend like I have. We were like Jonathan and David. We go way back, we did a lot. Even though we've we been through some years without seeing on top of each other. But when we got together, there was no difference. And it was great to see a lot of y'all come back, man. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of y'all in years. And I, 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 I had to brag on me, because he know I can do this. I used to kill everybody in this. <laughs>
I'm a pretty upbeat person, even within trying time. But the one word that I want to give to Chris Jack, if I had one word in this, this universe that I would attach to my friend, it would be resilience. Yes, through everything that he's gone through in his life, whether it's the coaching up and down, whether it's trying to get to the job, working years and trying to get the part, all the things he tried to never, ever stop. He was always trying to better himself under all negative situations. I don't care. He was always going to stand and try to do the best that he could under the circumstance. People beating him down. But he's just going to continue to stand there. Oh, man, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I said, Clyde, because I call him Clyde. I said, Clyde, it's going it's to be all right, man, because I need the God. So then, all of a sudden, the, 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 everything is flat. Here it is, I'm going to prove. <laughs> he got to be strong. <laughs> oh, he's going to be all right. I'm going to be down that courthouse, man. Every time they open the door, I'm going to be in. I said, I know it, Clyde. I know, I know everything's going to be all right, man. He said, no, if it has to do with me, I'm going to make sure that you're all right. And I said, I know you are. <laughs> but it is a wonderful thing. I'm going to divert just a second. The greatest basketball moment that I had with Chris Jack. We were in Nashville, mm -hmm. getting ready to play by the night. They had just come off the year before they were the national champion. And they beat us up there, and the Glenn Marcus is here. We know they cheated on us, but no, we know we were at no school. They weren't they were running no more in the world to go there with us. They weren't going to go there with us. But we were playing, we were ready to play Bob and Mike. And Chris said, hey, oh, they tell me that, that Bob and Mike never, you know, uh, called the first time out in the game. He said, now you're going to make me call the time out. <laughs> I said, all right, let, let's do that, Clyde. I think Lou Heller came out there. Oh, yeah, Lou. Hey, man, I didn't do ever came out there. He dropped three more jumps in a row. He dropped three more flies. At that point, by the night, got up and said, <laughs> <laughs> Clyde walked over to me and said, We got him on our <laughs> Man, it was just, it's just so many wonderful memories <clears throat> that, that I can talk about when it comes to, to Chris and, 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 and Christina. And, and Chris the second, you know, that's, you know, as I, as I listen to him now, because he's still talking to me, I don't know about you all, he, he's still talking to me. And really, it's, it's the one thing he really wants me to do. He wants me, and my charge in his life, him, is to help his son. That's, that's his charge to me. To help his son get back on his feet and to live a good life. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, Chris, Nelson, everybody, God, God bless you all. Chris, it won't be the last time, brother. I mean, I've been there long enough, I'm going to be here. So, I'll see you at some point in time. I ain't rushing to see <laughs> but, but I'm going to be there to see you again, and, and we're going to make Bobby Knight call it time out. Thank you all very much.
And my whole job while I was there is to keep Chris from killing everybody. <laughs>
It is my pleasure for the family to invite you here. After 21 years being next to that gentleman, I learned a lot about dealing with people, having faith in God, and doing what you believe first. Uh, I will hope that you people who knew Chris are here because he touched you the same way he touched me. And as we go through life, we hope that Chris and Christina will have a chance to come to each one of us and say, you knew my daddy. And then we can tell the whole story. <laughs> the good, the bad, and the indifferent. <laughs> this gentleman was. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this. This is about all I can do before. And when when a black man cries, this is not a pretty sight. <laughs> you think I need these things? No. I'm got these glasses on to hide my eyes. Because if I ever cry, I cry three times. My daddy's funeral, my mother's funeral, and my brother's funeral. Other than that, I'm pretty strong. And I would appreciate it when you leave that you tell people what a strong individual I was. You do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't live in London, I'm just going to here. Tell him I was great. Tell him he said things that don't go down and just, and if you got some witnesses, I give you $5 a piece. <laughs> Be blessed as you leave. We thank you for coming here, and we thank you for making Chris the guy we do love. Thank you. Enjoyed the game of basketball 
and making a difference in the countless numbers of students and athletes whose lives will forever be touched by knowing him. His greatest achievement was being a beloved and devoted father to his two beautiful children, Chris and Christina, instilling in them the values of perseverance, pride, and faith. Whereas Mr. Giles will be solely missed by family members, friends, and all who had the privilege of knowing him. His legacy will long endure past the passage of time and will remain as a comforting memory. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Birmingham, with Mayor Randall Woodman concurred, hereby extends its deepest condolences and heartfelt prayers to the family of Mr. Christopher Giles. We salute him on a life well lived. Presented this 16th day of November, 2024, at the recommendation of Council President Darrell O'Quinn. We also have a resolution from the mayor. The city of Birmingham mourns the passing of Christopher Giles, an esteemed member of our community, Who's devoted, who has devoted his life to serving others through education, mentorship, and sportsmanship. And whereas Christopher Giles was born Birmingham, Alabama, born in Birmingham, Alabama on March 11, 1959, and became a faithful member of Third Good Memorial CME Church, where he exemplified strength and commitment to faith. Whereas a graduate of the University of Alabama at Birmingham, Chris went on to serve as the assistant basketball coach for UAB's men's basketball team, guiding players for three seasons with, de with dedication and integrity that marked his career. His coaching journey continued again at Jackson State University, Alcorn State University, and Miles College. Whereas, although he enjoyed the game of basketball and made a difference in the countless number of lives of athletes whose lives will forever be touched, what brought him perhaps the greatest joy was being a beloved father to his two beautiful children, Chris and Christina. Whereas, he returned to Age Parker High School as an educator, bringing his passion for learning and personal growth back to his roots and exemplifying the values of service, integrity, and commitment to community. Mr. Christopher Giles, I acknowledge all and encourage all of the residents of Birmingham to rise to the occasion to salute the life and contributions of a man whose legacy will never be forgotten. Let us continue to pray for this family. Thank you. To the pastor of this great church, uh, church officials, other ministers of the clergy, and members of this church, good morning. Good morning. I would say my life has truly been impacted by knowing Coach Giles. You know, being the principal of Age Parker High School, or I've had Parker High School, is like being the president of a <laughs> university. <laughs> Before I present this resolution, I just have to say this. I went to an alumni meeting, and the coach asked so many questions, I thought I was being interviewed again. <laughs> but when he became part of our staff, I asked him, I said, why are you asking so many questions at that particular meeting? And he said that it just happened to be you, that anyone that has the keys to my school, I got to check them out. <laughs> because you truly love the A.H. Parker High School. And it just brought me joy when he became part of our staff, uh, what he would pour into our students each and every day, especially our young men, young ladies that are part of our basketball program. You know, he loved uh, teaching.
teaches the more important people of molding them and making them out of, you know, our future, future doctors, lawyers, teachers of talent. And he truly loves education and what he does. And it's just amazing how God ordained his steps to come back to Age Park High School where he started. We have what we call a security team at Age Park High School, and he wanted his helm to be 77 the year that he graduated. He was one of the biggest cheerleaders that we had. But you could be in the band, football team, Coach Warren, our football coach and I, was talking about Coach Al. Every Monday morning, great game, Coach. You know, y'all represented Age Park High School like they should be represented. You could be on the bowling team. He would have something positive to say. He's truly, truly going to be missed, but his legacy will live on. I want to ask that uh, Coach Smith, uh, Mrs. Hansberry, one of our assistant principals, and the boys and girls of our basketball program, please join me at the lecture. And if we have any faculty and staff, former or current faculty and staff and students, will you please stand in?
trying to pimp me <laughs> to help him sell a book. <laughs> so one season went by. Well, Chris, did you sell books? Oh, well, you know, like all good books, you have to read up.
presence. We thank God for our choir and musicians. Yes. Yeah. Because 
yesterday and Christmas. But I come to remind all of us, we must trust in the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, and the God of Jacob. Some people today need a healing. They are caregivers to their family members. Some of them are suffering from all manner of illnesses, heart troubles, COPD, high blood pressure, diabetes. Someone with a healing from cancer, and the list goes on and on. Someone here today barely can make their ends meet. Some people are having trouble choosing between buying their mess or buying groceries. However, King Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs to teach people how to obtain wisdom, discipline, and a prudent life. And how to do what is right and just and fair in the sight of God. Solomon instructed the young people of his day like a father giving advice to his child. While many of these proverbs are directed toward young people, the principles supporting this text are helpful to all believers, both male and female, young and old. Solomon encourages all of us to trust in the Lord. When we have, when we have important decisions to make in our lives, it seems like we can't trust anybody sometimes. You can trust God because he will be there in spite of your challenges of life. He will be there with you. You see, God knows what's best for us. He knows when we're right and he knows when we are wrong. See, we must trust in him and put our complete trust in him. You see, we must not be wise in our own eyes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We should always be willing to listen to the voice of God as he corrects us as a wise counselor in his word. You must bring all your decisions, all of your choices of life, all of the things that are going on in your life, take them to God, take them to Jesus, take them to Him, and He will, he will take care of those challenges in your life. You need Him to guide you. You need Him to deliver you. You need Him to undergird you. You need Him to be your leading pole when you need someone to lean on. To receive God's guidance, Solomon simply said we must acknowledge him in all we do. About a thousand years later, Jesus the Christ emphasized in Matthew chapter number 6 and 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Trust in the law. You see, the Hebrew word for trust means to lie down, to put your entire weight on something. You see, when you go to sleep at night, or you lie down in your bed, and you believe that your bed is going to hold you through the night. The Bible tells us, with all your heart, with all your heart, trust in God. With all your heart, in the text means entirely, without exception. So in essence, God says, trust me completely. Yeah. God says, I can sustain you. Your understanding won't support you. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He is your umbrella statement covering everything that goes on in your life. Pleasing God in all things is to become fully connected and consulting 
God's word. If you want an answer to your problem, go to his word. If you want to know what school to go to, if you want to know what job to go to, if you want to know how you should live your life, go to God's word. Amen. Too many people are going to magazines and, and other books trying to find the answer and solution to the world's problem. The word of God is right there before you and I, and if we study it and live by it, God will take care of us. God, God in all his ways. We must pray to him and seek his direction. You see, when you rely on God and all you do, he will make your path straight. God can remove obstacles, obstacles from your way and make a clear path for you. Well, Chris Giles on this side of the Jordan is no longer with us. And some may say, well, you know, he didn't live long enough. But I want to say to us today, it's not how long you live, it's how you live when you live.
if not for you I never could have made it in all my trials 